Hi, I'm James Marsh, and this is The High Notes, a show about real life in country music. I am the accounts director for Warner Music Nashville. I, mean, I work with everybody from Bon Jovi, Nickelback, Jay-Z, Ja Rule, Ashanti, Steven Tyler. Um, man, I can go on and on with it. I mean, it's been a long 22, coming up on 23 years. We're going to be talking about the EP release of Bailey Zimmerman. Well, my dad was a jazz and blues musician in Dallas for many, many years, and there's a big similarity between blues and rhythm and blues and country music and storytelling and livelihood. For me, when you start looking at the storyline, you start listening to these awesome writers here in Nashville, it's not the same as the old school good old boys club. One of the things about even doing this interview with you guys is for whoever watches this, somebody of color go, wait a minute, that guy is at that level at Warner Music Nashville. Warner Music Nashville took a chance on him. I'm setting the president up like, you can walk in the building and not think that you're going to be shut down immediately by the color of your skin. When you walk in the office and Dan Smyers from Dan and Shay is sitting in your office and he wants to have a beer with you just to catch up and talk about your family, come on. I mean, it's, who, who, who wouldn't love their job? So this is what I do. Basically, I negotiate radio airplay. Working with Bailey Zimmerman on an uh, album setup, by that time, Bailey's done all the work. He shook hands, he's kissed babies. I get with them and I'll see kind of what kind of marketing plan I can put together for the album to, to be released. It will be an opportunity for me to go and buy advertising, like when you hear it on the radio. It'll be an opportunity for me to set up an interview with Big D and Bubba. And we'll try to set up those things to get as much exposure before the album comes out. So again, Bailey's done his work. So now it's up to us to let everybody in the world, all those fans of Bailey Zimmerman, that his album is coming out on a particular day. So we wanna make sure we saturate every market, Bailey everywhere. Well, I met Bailey Zimmerman, he invited me out. I had no idea if I was gonna be even working with this artist or not. And here comes this bright-eyed, bushy-tailed kid. And I walked out of there going, that guy's got something, but he has no idea about how fast this is going to happen for him right now. Basically, it was in what we call an all hands on deck in the Warner Music office. We had to make a big showing for Bailey Zimmerman. You could see every time he opened up his TikTok and talked about the EP being released, he said, hey guys, go out and get my EP. And his following went and grabbed it up and the numbers were astronomical. And so that was definitely a high note for me. <laughs> a lot of social media for sure has basically changed the way we attack everything. We have a whole department now that is dedicated only toward TikTok, Instagram and all the social media. Everything's evolving. It's like when I first started, we had to make sure stores had vinyl and CDs in the store. Now it's like, let's just make sure that there's no streaming crashes with the platforms or whatever. So the EP release was huge. Um, Bailey was happy, Warner was happy, Electra Records was happy because it was a joint venture. And we do what we normally do, um, is we celebrate by having a few cocktails. So. We have platinum plaques to give out, and he got a you know, platinum plaque for this and a platinum plaque for that. I can't remember. It was like eight platinum plaques that night over at the Virgin Hotel that we uh, presented Bailey with that night. But I love baby acts like Bailey Zimmerman. And I drive people in bars nuts a lot of times because they're a song of play in the background. I go, oh, I work that. And another song, but, oh, I work that. I love baby acts that you bring them up. There's no greater feeling than, than that. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more. <laughs> Dude, I'm old. I'm 54, about to be 55 next month. And I'm not even drinking it. Maybe I should drink next time. Give me that last, the last line again.